Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and the Garistas Hunt is back, the Easter event and it is my favourite event. To do the hunt you need a key, to get the key you need to find a capsule, to find the capsule you need to use your D-scan so I'm going to show you how to find a capsule with your D-scan. Now it's basically down to how you got your D-scan set which is down to how you have your overview set so we're going to go on the tab we're going to use which is my warp 2 tab which has planets and moons on it because these capsules mostly seem to spawn at planets and moons but they can be elsewhere what you need to make sure you've got on is entities you can just switch them all on i did that and i've started switching some back off but specifically the one you need is a regular capsule if that's not checked off you will not see these on your overview therefore you will not see them on your d scan you can't see them at all you can get these with probes certainly last year you could only get them down to about 44 percent so you'd know roughly which celestial they were close to but you still have to use your d scan to get close or be very specific with your scanning but I think that by far D-Scan is the best way to do it. Every ship can D-Scan to exactly the same level. Now I've scanned on that setting and we can see there are two capsules up there. So I'm going to adjust the range and see how far away they are. So they're more than, they're between 10 and 14.3 AU away. That's the thing, first thing I know about the capsules. And now we're going to put the angle on the D-Scan down to 5 degrees and you select something over on the overview. At the appropriate range you click C to track to it and then V to scan over there and we can see all we've got here is the planet, the customs office and the capsule. So let's go and have a look over here. Some are much simpler than this, you'll see almost straight away where it is when you look on your D scan. Some take a little bit of hunting, it's called the hunt isn't it after all. And this is what low sec hunting can be like, it can be take quite a bit of patience to track down a ship and actually get into a position where you can get at him. Right, so we're landing on grid. There's no sign of the capsule on the overview, so it's not here. They do move around. They can despawn. Last year in one of the videos, which I'll link at the end of this one, because as I now know, last year's fits do seem still to work. I'm just checking my settings, celestials. Moon is another one you might need to manually put on. They're very often at moons. I suspect this one will turn out to be at a moon, but let's just have a look. I've got other tabs with other settings, so I'm going to give those a quick check just to see if he turns up on there. I don't know if it might be worth just setting up one tab just for this kind of thing where everything is on it. But um, in general gameplay, I do keep my tabs a little bit filtered so I don't get clutter I don't want in the way. But I do want what I need to be there to show. So this is now showing me on my general hunting tab uh, that it looks like it's very close to an asteroid belt. And the scan is only set to one AU there. So when I get to the asteroid belt, and it's not here, it should really still be within 2 AU. But I set myself back to 360, and it's nowhere to be seen. So this one's disappeared or despawned. So let's just start again. We'll find him. We'll get back onto that tab with all the moons and the planets on it, because I think that's where we'll find him lurking. Let's give that a go. Get the angle down. We'll point at one of those. We know he's over in that range somewhere. And I suspect he's going to be over on all these moons on this planet, planet 5. So let's get the angle down. Scan over there. There's the capsule. There are all those moons. The best plan now is simply to warp to one of those moons. Because they're all showing on the D scan, we need to get among them and then descan, obviously. And then the angles will show us which moon in amongst this huge cluster the capsule is actually at. And then once we get there, I'll show you what to do. You can do this, as I said, with any ship. Any ship can descan. You do need to have some form of uh, DPS. It could just be one drone, really. I do tend to try to kill these quite quickly. In high sec, as I found, um, other people might come and try to get them off you. They can warp away whilst you're on grid with them. So uh, killing them quickly is a good idea. Right, the D-scan's narrowed it down to three moons, a planet and a customs office. So we're going to go to the first moon. And again, once we're in amongst that little cluster of uh, celestials, the D-scan will be able to focus it down. But we don't need to because it's right here on grid. And once you've found the little chap, you just need to lock him up and get the pews on him, whichever kind you have brought with you. 
and then just loot the wreck of course <laughs> don't forget to loot the wreck i never forget to loot the wreck not even in videos eh haha <laughs> so there you go that's basically d scan 101 for you and you can use that passively as well to check a location before you walk there if you're in low sec as in a wormhole or null sec or even when you're in high sec from time to time have your d scan there it's your eyes locals helpful but you don't know whether they're docked or cloaked on grid with you not that d scan will help with everything like a cloaked ship or a curse but anyway let's have a little look at the fit now shall we a very quick look because it's not a very complex fit and it's certainly not an expensive one and here we have the fit screen this is exactly the same fit that i used last year i thought it was a good idea to use one from last year simply to see if the event itself had changed and so far i can report it doesn't seem to have but let's have a look for ourselves we've got three light neutron blaster twos up the top that's giving us a fall off of uh, just over seven kilometers and an optimal of three thousand meters that's about perfect for this site the ships are going to kite around us mainly at about four to six thousand meters i just stick with null it saves worrying about it you don't have time in this site to be switching ammo certainly not with blasters and it saves you having to chase around to catch up with the rat it's one less thing for you to have to manage basically that much more leeway that gives us 133 dps running and if we simulate fit if we overheat we're going to get 150 dps pretty much bang on but we're only going to use that when we need it and probably only for the last room. In the mid slots we've got the enduring afterburner to keep us moving and we're going to have that on the whole time that we're on the site. Enduring obviously to reduce the capacitor usage. We've got the webber, everything we're shooting at is going to get webbed as much as possible. Out to 10 kilometers. so within the ranges of our guns everything's going to get slowed down. We will simply apply better and hit them quicker. We're going to have a mixture of frigates, destroyers and maybe a cruiser. So, um, yeah, we'll slow them down and hit them. Again, it saves part of the problem of having to worry about tracking, about traversal, and about chasing them down. The small capacitor booster 2. This could be a meta version. There's not much in it. This is what I had on the ship from last year, and I literally grabbed it and went out, found a capsule, came and done the site. Loaded with Navy Cap Booster 200, so that means they're going to give us 200 capacitor back every time we use one. The reason you use Navy, although they're much more expensive than the regular cap boosters, is they take up much less cargo hold space and therefore you can carry more into the fight. And they are basically what gets us through this site. I'm not going to lie to you. Down in the bottom, we've got a small armor repairer too, which is going to rep us 155 hit points per 3.8 seconds. That's obviously modified by not just our skills, but the rigs that we've got. We'll get to those. I've got two multi-spectrum coating twos fitted down here. You could go one thermal and one kinetic. That would be more appropriate for this site. But as I'm dipping in and out of low sec all the time, I tend to keep my resistances a little bit more balanced because I never actually know what's going to end up shooting at me at the end of the day. And then one magnetic field stabilizer two to give us a bit more DPS. In the rigs, we have got one nanobot accelerator, which is helping the repper run faster. And then two auxiliary nano pumps which helps the repper repair more i think that's about the right balance you don't just want the repper repping faster and faster and faster because it's eating your cap quicker and quicker and quicker now as i said the capacitor is a key part of running this site it's just over 400 gigajoules capacity which means if we get under half and we use one of those boosters it's going to fill us back up we're only going to run the booster one cycle at a time that way we're managing its use, we're cutting down its reload time, and we're never overcharging the capacitor and wasting them. So this should be quite a simple fit to manage on the site. If it looks a little bit complicated, don't be too daunted. It comes to just over 10 million, it says here 10.8 million. It may be a little bit more, but this is the risk we're putting in. Let's see what the return is. So I think that's all we need to know about the fit, other than it has one Hornet 2 in its drone bay. Last year I ran the site without a Hornet, this year I've got a cunning plan. And in the cargo hold we have got ammo, the void I'm not going to use at all, the cap boosters and the null is all we need. And we've got enough CPU and power grid left there to accommodate lower skills than Furia has. Furia also has some implants, let's have a little look at those. She has a 1% Squire power management implant, that's for general fitting. The gunslinger implant is 2% tracking speed, that's 10 million. The next one is just for scanning, it's 2% core scanner strength bonus 
And lastly, the Gunslinger Surgical Strike is 2% bonus damage to all turreted weapons. Furia has trained above the 5 million skill point alpha Q limit, but that's really just been for cross training. But just a little look there, and just to confirm to some of you doubting Thomases that alphas can indeed use tech 2 blasters both small and medium they can use tech 2 drones they can use tech 2 hams if you're willing to put the skill points into it and uh, they can use tech 2 small drones i would like to point out that in the drone section i've got skill points that i earned locked now behind a paywall because ccp did roll back the medium drone and drone interfacing skills back a while ago and now those skill points of mine there are locked behind a paywall i'd have to have a little bitch at the devs about that hey anyway yep yeah, so we're a fully rounded alpha there's no denying that the two gunslinger implants they're 10 mil each they're really to balance the scales a little bit when i'm getting into fights in low sec they're not at all relevant to the running of this site and just to equalize things when i ran the site in this bit last year i dropped one of those five percent shield and armor rep booster doses that we've been given through one of the giveaways i'm not going to do that in the running of this so uh yeah there's five percent less reps going on because there's no booster off we go anyway hey. okay we're at the acceleration gate into the site they show up on the probe scanning window the same one that you'd find um hideaways and dens and do your scanning on and here we are and we're in as soon as we land in we need to start moving so initially we're just going to start locking everything up we're going to click in space and we're going to get the afterburner burning. The afterburner stays on the whole run. I am not too concerned with this fit about the e -well that is coming in on me. I'm not prioritizing anything specifically. The webs are obviously letting them apply damage a little bit quicker. We're repping. We're not overheating anything at this stage and everything is going fine. The basic tactic is to pick them out, orbit them at a thousand meters. I prioritize the destroyers because they have more DPS. It's as simple as that. Other fits, you'll have to prioritize maybe the ships that are neutering you. But I think with this fit, if you go for the destroyers because they're DPS and anything that's webbing you because it's slowing you down, that is really all you need to do in terms of primaries. Of course, here I should be primarying the Corax, which is in range, not the Bantam that's way out of range. So I'm going to switch my fire over. Talking of the Bantams, um, look at my overview. They're not moving. I don't know why they're hanging out over there. I assume they're Lodgy ships. And if they joined the fight, they were in the fight last time, last year, I mean, and uh, we coped with that. So I'm not sure if these are kind of glitched out or bugged out, but the two Bantams are just sitting exactly where they spawned, I think. They're not moving, they're not doing anything at all. So we'll just kill those right now. I'll bump the footage up to two times speed until something of note happens. We haven't used any cap boosters yet on this first wave. I've looked, we've hovered around half capacitor. So uh, I wait till I get maybe to about two thirds and then hit one cycle on the cap booster. Don't let it just cycle because you don't want to waste any of the second cap booster or go into a reload early or indeed run out of cap boosters if you've run a couple of sites consecutively. Killing this guy is going to spawn the next wave. There is the acceleration gate you can see up there in the background that will unlock and show up on the D scan once I have cleared this room. And here is the next spawn. So we're back to normal speed just while we settle in and it's exactly the same process here. Just go for the closest one first, orbit it at a thousand meters and set your web, your guns on it. Rep as need be. We've got a big whack of damage there. So I'm thinking about overheating the reps, but I don't do it yet. And we managed to pull it back. You will get those kind of hits in combat. This site, I just think is excellent for getting players who've never really been into PVP, uh, low sec, wormholes, null sec. Used to the idea that even if it is really hectic and really tough, you just need to keep flying and keep doing what you know you need to do in your ship to uh, make the most of the situation, whether it's to try to get away or try to beat the other guy. I've pulled range on the two Coraxes a little bit, but they're still hitting me with their rockets. I need to get this Cormorant killed. I've used the first load of cap boosters just to get us up to scratch ready for the next wave, get the reload out of the way so we've got more when we need them. I did overheat the repairer slightly as I turned back in towards these guys. I forgot that Coraxes don't apply any better just because you get closer, so that was unnecessary. 
On the Cormorants, the closer they are, the damage will ramp up quite significantly. I guess the missiles get to you a bit quicker if you're closer, but that's more to do with how quickly the damage is applied than boosting the DPS. I sped up to three times speed as we take these couple of guys down, but then the next wave doesn't spawn automatically. We find ourselves having to go up towards the acceleration gate, and that triggers the next spawn. I highly recommend to any player who's ever thought about having to go at PvP or dipping their toe into low sec etc to give the hunt a go. This is kind of a taste of it. It's a little bit soft play in that you're not playing real players. It is AI. If you can get your head around this and it's really not hard. I'm not putting much thought into this. It's quite an easy to use fit. You hit the cap booster when you're down to half cap. You target and web and shoot the closest one you will be at a thousand you rep as you need to you overheat your repairer if you need to as and when if things get a little bit low overheat for a little while then switch it back off thermodynamics is a skill that mitigates heat damage from overheating modules i thoroughly recommend that it's something that you have learned you might neglect it sometimes i know that overheating isn't something in the mind of many uh general pve players certainly from my experience forgive me if i'm wrong or you are an exception so this is teaching us a few of the principles from de-scanning to putting up with what's happening to you but kind of staying in control and doing what you need to do to make the most of the situation choosing a primary target based on what they're doing to you in this case it's really just the ones with the most dps and the ones that are going to web us the only exception is going to be if anything turns up with ECM. The Bantam Frigates were on the event last year. They're still on that last wave again. They just sat there and waited for me to go and kill them. They were busy. I've looked at last year's video. They did what they needed to do, not particularly well, but they were getting involved and it made no difference to the running of the site in this fit. Right, this spawn has a cruiser. It can be a caracal. This is the Blackbird. He will try to ECM us, which means... We won't be able to lock any other ships on grid, but we can still lock him. So once we are ECM'd, we've still got the lock on the other destroyer right now. When that lock drops, you know he's ECM'd us out, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to go and get into range of him and kill him. We're more than capable of doing that. If it's the Caracal, obviously that's a DPS ship. It can give you some big whacks of damage. One of the key things to remember here is to always keep moving. Never let your ship stop. Always keep moving around minimize the uh, application of the enemy's damage so once the blackbird's down no problem we'll take down the destroyer and that is the last rat out here in this room so now we just got to get ready for the final one and it will be fast and frantic i know that it's very like the missions you get level four where it's you against one guy in a frigate and they're really fast frantic furious missions and who better to do a furious little task than furia our hero alpha now we're going to make sure the guns and the cap booster is fully loaded you can linger here for a little while in high sec of course once this gate is unlocked i did get followed through into the last room a couple of times last year we're going to go to regular speed now because if i sped this bit up you might miss it right as soon as we land on grid we preheated the repper and the guns they're preheated already as soon as we get on grid we've saved the drone we're going to drop him now he may take aggro and die he may stay alive and apply DPS. Either way, win-win. We're going to lock the guy up. We're going to set the orbit at 1,000. Guns on, web on, afterburner on, repper on, drone on him. We're going to hit the cap booster when we get to half capacitor. If there is any kind of structure in this last room, stay away from it, as, it, as in the last room. If you hit something and you lose speed, you will die very quickly in this fight indeed. We are managing the reps very well. We're going to turn the repper off. Look at that. This is an incursus, ladies and gentlemen, in its natural environment. I'm going to pop the cap booster. The alarm reminded me to there, but we've got plenty of leeway. Remember with the cap booster, you get the, you get the capacitor as soon as you hit the button. The guns, I'm keeping an eye on there, overheating nice and gently. We're tanking him beautifully, and he is going down. He's going down. He is ours. And the drone took no aggro. He survived. He did his little contribution. As I say, he, he would have gone down proudly had he taken a bit of aggro. But I hope you can agree, guys, this is not a trick fit. This is not too complicated at all. Have a go. Even if you lose a couple of ships, it's worth the investment. The only way to learn how to handle this kind of stuff and do this kind of stuff is to do it. And look at that 60 mils worth of isk of doing it. I can't even get it all in. 
I'm going to have to eject a couple of cap boosters, I think, to get those last couple of overseer's possessions in. I'll keep the funky hat. <laughs> Not only it takes up much space. There's the booster I didn't use. Feel free to use one. We've probably got them stashed away, all of us, from giveaways. Or there's the instant use boosters. Might be appropriate. Have a look at what you've got. But please give this a go. It's fast, it's furious, it'll get you descanning, it'll get you tanking, it'll get you just handling a very stressful situation. You don't want your first really stressful situation to be when you land in a gate camp or someone lands on grid with you. You may well get out of the situation, you may well win the fight. But by getting used to things being this kind of crazy and you just stick into your game plan, riding it out, the more you fly your ship, the more you get used to it. I've literally got this out of storage from last year, found the capsule, got the key and come and run a site. So I was a little bit clunky in there. Just shows how much leeway there is in the fit. And there's never any shame in losing a ship. It's usually you know what you did to mess up. Um, so if you do, don't worry about that whatsoever. Every loss is a lesson. When we take new bros into the corp, one of the first things we used to do is give them 10 Tristans and tell them to go and lose them in faction warfare plexes. They wouldn't take long to come back usually, but they'd learnt so much in those 10 fights, it was worth them then putting a bit more into a better ship. And there's always that element of danger. I may have a spawn that catches me out. I may mess up and lose my ship. Who knows? The Abyss is similar. That's something you can pop a filament and go and do as a warm-up, as a bit of a fast and furious bit of action. Get yourself used to being uh, messed with by ECM and EWAR and all that kind of stuff and riding it out and getting on with your mission. The most similar thing I find in general space is to run a den in a blaster cormorant or any close range gun destroyer. So look, I'm going to be putting videos up of me doing this in a, an active tank cormorant, an Algos, which I know from last year is going to be hectic on account of the drone aggro and having to manage them. And a breacher, see if I can do it in those ships. At the end of this one, I'm going to link last year's runs in the catalyst, which is also goes through the de-scanning again in case you want to see that and a Merlin. I think they will both apply. Hopefully the Bantams will get fixed, so I know. And the spawns do vary, but I'm pretty confident this is going to ride it out. So have a go. I do encourage you to have a go. If you've never tried anything like this, you will be so pleased with yourself when you've completed one. I know you will. And once you learn how to push your luck, and you're flying cheap ships, so you're really willing to push your luck, because you can see from the footage just playing out very quickly behind you, you can get away with all kinds of nonsense. That was a thorax, by the way. Anyway, I'm going to be back very soon. I've got some more Nubro videos coming up. I need to get on with two. But for now, leave us a like if you've liked it. Good luck on your hunt. Any comments, any suggestions, I would be greatly appreciated as always. Fly brave. Remember, even as believing, you can do it. Give it a go. For now, take care of yourselves and each other. And goodbye.